This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 412, Why You Must Be Patient with Self-Conditioning, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who's been reading blog posts to you every day, including holidays, for over a year. This is with permission from the authors, by the way. Sometimes I'll read from books, but mostly blogs. And today is actually a continuation from yesterday because the post was a little long. So you might wanna check out episode 411 before hearing this one, otherwise it's gonna be a very strange episode for you. And with that out of the way, let's get right to the second half of the post and continue optimizing your life. Why You Must Be Patient with Self-Conditioning, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Sometimes the conditioning produces a series of incremental changes only. Other times it leads to a sharper tipping point. Several weeks ago, I had an epiphany. I up and decided to close and delete all my social media accounts. It was very clear that I needed to do that. But just a few days earlier, that decision wasn't clear at all. However, I was doing months of almost daily conditioning leading up to this decision in the form of video priming and quitting social media aligned closely with the conditioning I was doing. It took a while, but eventually that conditioning became strong enough that new thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and behaviors became dominant. And those patterns made it very clear that it was time for me to move on from social media. Since I've continued to condition similar patterns after dropping social media, now the new patterns are even more dominant and the decision to drop social media seems even more obvious in retrospect. I wonder why I didn't do this years ago. It's fascinating how daily conditioning can reprogram our minds and how the effects seem to grow exponentially over time. On any given day, such conditioning looks like it's having no effect. But when you look back several weeks, you'll often see some obvious and profound effects. Maintenance conditioning. Even after achieving a new goal or installing a new habit, I often find it necessary to continue with some form of the mental conditioning that got me there in the first place. When I don't do this, I find myself backsliding. There are so many societal influences that encourage us to feel negative, to fear experiences that aren't actually dangerous, to obsess over trivialities, and to settle for less than our potential. In the absence of powerful, conscious self-conditioning, These societal influences too often become the dominant patterns within our own brains. All experience is mental programming. Whatever you experience through your senses is still actively programming your brain. It's up to you to take control of this programming. If you don't like it, you can change it. Say no to negative programming. If your experiences are largely negative, you're programming your brain to get better, stronger, and faster at running negative patterns. You're allowing yourself to be programmed for increased negativity. That's a very bad idea. Please never do that to yourself. If you see this happening to you, run. Taking in daily positive input is wonderful. Definitely do that. But it's imperative that you also stop allowing negative patterns to continue programming you. If you're noticing those patterns at all, they're definitely programming you. Telling yourself, I'm not being programmed, or I can rise above this, doesn't actually work. If your eyes see it or your ears hear it, then those patterns have already gone into your brain. While you cannot delete old patterns, unless you get yourself surgically lobotomized, you can overpower them with positive patterns, but you need to turn off the negative input first. Just as with positive programming, you won't usually notice the effects of negative programming, except when you look back to a time when the negative programming wasn't there. Then you see the cumulative effects, such as the loss of friends, remembering that you used to be happier, seeing your health decline, seeing how much stress you have now, etc. People sometimes ask me how I deal with negative-minded or critical friends or family members. I respond truthfully that I don't deal with such people at all. If we can't relate to each other on the basis of mutual respect and mutual support, then I don't have such people in my life, regardless of whether they're blood relatives or were once close friends. I understand that everyone has a bad day now and then, and that's completely forgivable. But if they opt to wallow in negativity as their default pattern and try to relate to me on that basis, they're out. To do otherwise would mean deliberately subjecting myself to ongoing negative programming, and it seems like a very foolish thing to do. I have better and more interesting things to do with my life. Fighting internally with your own brain doesn't seem like such a bright idea, unless you're a masochist and love struggling with self-sabotage. I think it makes more sense to regard your brain as your best ally. Give your brain quality input, i.e. quality programming, and you'll discover that your brain can be a very powerful and supportive ally. If you find yourself feeling stuck dealing with negative-minded people, let me remind you that you're saying yes to that. Silent approval is still approval. You have better options than to let people negatively program your brain. Positive conditioning doesn't take root in poison soil. 
Opt out of the negative conditioning you notice in your life first. If you have to fire a bunch of people, make it so. Then start conditioning yourself with positive thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and behaviors that align with your desired path. And most of all, be patient. The numbers I shared earlier are just made up for the sake of example. The important observation I wanna stress is that daily personal conditioning requires consistent and patient practice to create change. You'll often see little or no effect at first, but if you're taking in positive input, rest assured that it's already affecting your brain. If your eyes are seeing it or your ears hearing it, then your visual or auditory cortex is processing it and your neural network is changing. It will take time for these changes to become consciously observable. Eventually, this daily conditioning can produce some truly powerful results which often resemble patterns of exponential growth. You just listened to part two of the post titled Why You Must Be Patient with Self-Conditioning by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'll keep this ending super minimal for you for all things to support this podcast or contact me or join my free book raffles and get some spreadsheet tools from me for free. Come by oldpodcast.com, simple as that. And thank you so much for being here and listening consistently with me. It means a lot. And while I do occasionally get negative feedback about an episode here and there, they're not perfect. But the nice things I hear far outweigh those. So I really appreciate the comments, sharing the podcast with friends and all your support. I can't believe I've been able to make this work for a year and with four podcasts. And that's all thanks to you continuing to listen. Have a great day. And I'll be back tomorrow with a post from Leo Babauta of Zen Habits. I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.